You're welcome back to Nationwide and you're welcome back to Crumlin Village. Now our next story this evening takes us to the south of the country where the Cork Academy of Music provides a music and arts based educational programme for a high number of participants in the north side of Cork City. We went along to see the students in action and also to meet the man whose idea for community based education has meant that a large number of graduates have ended up getting jobs in the music industry. We're delighted to be here in this building, right in the, uh, in the, no on the north side. We're now providing a, an immediacy here for the people of the north side that are very, very proud of. There's a great history attached to this school here. You have people like Jack Lynch, Neil Tobin, a lot of important people in the country went to school here. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's um, three or four schools on the campus still operating. Now we are here and uh, providing this service. We have senior citizens coming in, people in the locality, we go to entertain people in the locality. So, this is our home now, we're very, very happy to be in it. Set up by Bob Seward in 1994, the Academy is a voluntary, not-for-profit school. Bob recognised that not everyone thrives in an academic environment, and he believed that with access to music, many young people, particularly on the north side of Cork City, could break through, find their voice and succeed through music. Today, his dream is a reality and thousands of people, young and not so young, have attended classes here at the old North Monastery School Campus in Cork. When I was brought up, my father was a professional musician, so there was music in my house morning, noon and night, he was a piano player. And uh, I had a great love for music and I started going into the drums as a very young boy. I think I'm about the same standard now as when I started, but I'm just an amateur. But I've had the greatest pleasure in the world for the last 20 years, the early 50s playing. And it's a lovely uh, profession to be in as part-time or as a professional musician in that business and that you're in a happy environment all the time. Uh, it's great to be able to get, make people happy by playing music. So I've got great pleasure out of playing and I still do at the moment. First of all, I spent a long time in the army. I went to the army very young, about 16. I spent a long time in the army. I came up through the ranks uh, in the army and I retired as a captain. I had a wonderful life in the army, both at home and abroad, and um, made wonderful friends that I, what, what I still have. In the army, he served with the UN and received two UN peace medals in recognition of his work in the Congo in 1960 and Cyprus in 1963. After 28 years, he retired to civilian life in Cork, where he began work with an organisation tasked with providing education and support to those with both physical and intellectual disabilities. It was during this time that he saw the need for the academy he would later establish. I left the army. I was regional manager of rehabilitation institute for the South Region for Cork and Kerry. During that period, I came across a lot of people who would be considered, I suppose, socially deprived, you could use that word, you know, or marginalised in some way. F minor. There was a need uh, for people who were unemployed, uh, people who wanted to learn music, for one thing, uh, they couldn't afford it. It's expensive to go to schools of music and very expensive for private tuition. So I tried to set up something here that would give people an opportunity of learning music. It, the study showed like that there was potential for, for employment for people if you train them properly. So when I set it up, we set out with the aim of giving people an education with qualification, with certification. And we've done that, we've maintained that aim for the past 22 years. It's estimated that since the Academy began in 1994, many thousands of people have been given an opportunity to study and to learn to play music. Of these, some have gone on to university and a number have qualified and returned to teach at the Academy. I started here in the Academy of Music in 2008 and um, I had always been employed, I was a bar manager for, uh, for a number of years but I took ill then in 2008 and I had to fall out of the, the employment sector. Um, when I kind of started to recover, um, the, the local uh, community welfare officer Martin Ahern um, had recommended that I do a course just to get back on my feet. 
so I told him about my love of music and he, he asked around and he found a course right here in the academy. I came here in 2008 and um, I gained enough um, music qualifications to enter third level in 2010. I finished my degree in 2014 and I came to work here then full time. I just liked the, the whole kind of ethos of the academy, very welcoming, very community friendly um, very including as well, you know, it wasn't, nobody was ever excluded. One thing that you'd, you'd have to appreciate about Bob is his, um, he's, he's strict, he has a policy himself that he's firm, fair and friendly and, um, and, and, he, and it's right and, and it's a policy that I try to instil in the students that I teach as well. We are very firm, I think it's a good um, discipline for people to learn when they come here for when they do go on to either work in the music industry or enter third level. It's very important that they've experienced a bit of firmness and a bit of fairness and most importantly friendliness and that's the policy Bob has and that's instilled in the teachers and it passes down onto the students and I think it's just proof in the pudding when they come back and they say I've got my degree, I've finished my college degree and, and it's, as I said, it's, it's evident that it works. I was from a very young age um, massive interest, uh, family influence in music, um, but how I was going to study it was the thing. And it's through a career guidance course I found out about the academy here. I started on level three here about four and a half years ago. Went on to do level four and five fee tech and it was fantastic. The support here, the teaching here was brilliant um, from start to finish. And my aim was to go on to college and do a degree and thanks to the academy here that has allowed me to do that and without the place I've, I'm able to put, practice my music and put it into play and I call it my therapy you know, um, I love it, I love music yeah. The Academy caters for people from 16 to 60 and its founder, who's in his 83rd year, is as passionate today about the inclusive nature of the school and stresses the importance of the welcome to those who may feel intimidated by larger, more formal educational facilities. I think there's a great warmth in the school, there's a warmth from the teachers, there's a lot of heart in the place. Uh, there's a happy atmosphere here which, which goes down onto the students. People like, if I, I have to hunt people out here and leave me at five o'clock, they don't want to go. Well, we got involved in the, what's known as the Generation Programme, and that was established uh, about six years ago with funding from U2 and the American Ireland Fund. And the funding came through for to provide tuition, tutors, uh, paid tutors, and to purchase instruments. So uh, we got involved at the start, we're, kind of, we're the catalyst here for the South. We're just a voluntary work on our part, by the way. So we have about 18 teachers on out throughout the city. We have 450 students in training, and it's wonderful. Now, in a community like here in the North, where there's high unemployment, very few people are going on to third level from here. The figures are very low over the years. It's improving now. And to have children going home with a saxophone, a clarinet, or a guitar, now they're sp speaking music at the table. So we'll bring the arts into the community. Bob's commitment to the music and to the thousands who have benefited from his endeavour has not gone unnoticed. And in 2012, he received an honorary master's in music from UCC and an inspirational life award for his voluntary work presented by President Mary McAleese. But it's the students who have received the greatest prize, which in some cases has literally changed lives. Going to the river to break the down when I started level four, I, I didn't sing until halfway through, so I wouldn't sing for anybody, not my family, not my mother. Nobody ever heard me sing, so everyone was just as shocked as I was when I did sing, <laughs> finally. And I've fallen in love with singing. I'm still a bit anxious when it comes to it but I've gotten way better and I just really enjoy performing on stage and performing in an ensemble and singing and seeing everyone singing along with me. Earlier this year the respect and value for Bob's work was given the highest accolade in his home county. The Cork Person of the Year 
is, is the February person of the month, Bob, Bob Stewart. On Vanisha Owing Abu. I am a bit shocked and uh, I feel deeply honoured uh, getting this award today. It was wonderful uh, for me and my family and also for the Academy. Like, this is a team here. We work as a team. It's not me in this place. I couldn't work without the teachers. I couldn't work without the staff. My administrative staff are brilliant. So it's, it's all those people together. And that award meant an awful lot to all of us. We're trying to develop an advance all the time to move on, move on, move on. I have plans afoot at the moment for, uh, to renovate here and improve the whole standard. Uh, it's about 900,000, like it's a big deal, but we've got architects who helped us for free. We've got engineers and quantity surveyors working. And we have the plans drawn up now. If, uh, if there's any wealthy philanthropists out there would like to come down and help us, we'd be delighted because uh, it's really worthwhile. A really nice story there about a man who's given so much to the community and is the very worthy recipient of the Cork Person of the Year Award for 2017. On next Wednesday's Nationwide, a visitor centre where the main attractions are on four legs. We visit the National Stud in County Kildare to see the horses and also the spectacular gardens. And that's all coming up when Nationwide is back here on RT1 Wednesday at 7. Back to tonight, we meet the Irishmen for whom the 1979 papal visit has become part of their identity. The John Pauls is tonight's documentary special at 9.35.